Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic punk rock, hardcore Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, the punk rock engineer. With me is Phil. That's right. With me is Phil. That's right. Who's on camera control and mic check. Yeah. We've got a rockin' show tonight, as That's I right. mentioned. We've got all sorts of stuff. We've got demo. No selling out tonight. No. We're always original. Yeah. We're number one. No record label will have us. No, that is that is definitely no true. No venture capitalist will fund us. And I can't sing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got my awesome punk collar, so I'm feeling yeah. extra punk. We've got cool stuff on the show. Tell <coughs> them what's on tonight's show. On tonight's show, we're going to talk about the show and tell. we got a special code tonight, OSCON, for all sorts of reasons. We'll go Open over that Open source. Soon. Convention. That's right. We'll talk about some new stuff at Adafruit. Talk about some new things going on, some views that we got on YouTube. Cappy, we've got the new Cappy staff person at Adafruit who's going to do the voice. Made in New York, Adafruit's Made in New York. We'll talk about that a little bit, about open source hardware and the open source hardware summit. Oshawa. Hackaday sold to Supply Frame. We'll talk about that. Hack the Mailbag's going to stop by, read some mail. Got some Arduino stuff. A slightly new segment, drones. A next computer, a holy one, if you know what I mean. Adafruit Learning System, Wearable Wednesday, 3D Thursday, Pi Day, new products, that's what the sound means. <laughs> Take your questions, we'll have a trivia question, a little bit of top secret, we'll have that, all that and more, and a cat. And a cat. All that on Ask an Engineer. We may have a video of a cat. So yeah, we you have a video really, of a cat. You really want to watch the entire show tonight. Yeah, we have a video of a cat. So that you can see okay. this cat video that we took. We're doing cat, this thing. Cat hated it. Yeah. Okay, we're here. Okay. So. What's first? Yeah, here's the deal. Um, the code tonight is OSCON. OSCON just ended. OSCON just ended, but the sale begins. 10% off everything. And the different store. OSCON is the open source convention in Portland, Oregon, 22nd to 26th. We have a lot of open source stuff in the store. We have a lot of open source stuff in the store. That is the code. OSCON. Yeah. We went to OSCON. We went to OSCON like three years ago. We keynoted it in 2007. We keynoted it. I sat on a chair. Yeah. And, uh, and I keynoted it. Was a fun, it was a fun talk. Yeah. So. Oh, hey. That's who I am. Yeah. Hello. Okay. All right. Look at the production values here. Maybe we did sell out. Yeah, maybe. There's a team of 50 people who run Ask an Engineer now. Yeah, is that so? Yeah, there's a, you can't see all the, the audio technicians and, oh, and, all, and video technicians. Phil, they're all puppets. Really? Yeah. We do. We do have all of our puppets there. They're puppets. They're not real people. Yeah, we're not real. James Cameron has been working on Ask an Engineer for a while. We're avatars. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, so let's talk about the show and tell. Okay. What was on the show and tell? We had a, a lovely show and tell with four fine guests. First up was Dino returning back with his modular robot that has a modular robot as a robot module. Think about that for a second. Blow your mind. Uh, the latest module that he's made is a gas sensor module. It detects carbon monoxide, alcohol, flammable gases, and methane. So he kind of yeah. like has it all. And he has these, these plug-and-play modules. He created this bus. It's kind of intense. He's got like IMU modules. It's cool. He just loves building robots. Andre showed up, he went to a camp about robotics and he learned about pneumatic control, which is fun because it uh, can be very fast, very powerful, much faster than uh, winding copper, air, yeah. power of air. So he has harnessed the power of air using a compressor and Arduino, and he's got this compressor hooked up to this like uh, actuator, and it's yeah. actuating. It actuated. It was loud. Yeah. It was from a camp thing he was at. He does, a, I think, first. So. He does FRC yeah. 1537. I don't know. Something, yeah. something like that. I don't remember the FRC number. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Matheson showed up. He's doing uh, software-defined radio with GNU Radio and then this other tool whose name I forgot. Using a Raspberry Pi. He's doing APRS stuff. He's got a call sign. He's in San Diego. Uh, check out the video for more details on using software defined radio with a pie. Yeah. It's cool. Looks it like there was some really cool project. stuff going on there. Ham radio in the 22nd century. Yeah. 21st century. Whatever. 28th century. Yeah. In the future. Like, like Buck Rogers. I don't even know what day it is. Yeah. Well, it's Saturday because we're doing Ask Yeah. Okay. Ian showed up. Ian 
um, had another Pi project. He built like an Arduino power supply controller for the Raspberry Pi, and he did that. But he's doing Bitcoin mining with his Pi, and he's got some Avalon ASICs. I now know um, quite a bit about ASICs ever since we did our Bitcoin Pi Miner project. And we have a Adafruit Bitcoin mining tutorial. That's right. What a weird world we're living in. That's right. We do have that, and you can check it out at the learning site. Yeah. Learn.adafruit.com. All these people get a fabulous sticker. All they have to do is email support at And if okay. you want a sticker, a high quality vinyl sticker just yeah. like this, it's not, this is not life size. It's not mm. actually three foot by three foot. It's actually kind of like this. Depends how big your screen is. It could be a retina display, and it could be huge, or it could be, it could be on their TV. Through well, a, but compared to my through size. A, through a, or a chrome dongle or something. It's All like this. It's this big. Right it's a very yeah. lovely sticker. If you, you want, want a sticker, oh, you it's want free. Them, you want to tell them how to get in show and tell? But you have to be on the show and tell to show off a project. Show off yeah. your project. Go to plus to google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit and find the post where I say comment here to be added to the show and tell circle. Comment. Add, get yourself added to the show and tell circle and then every single week at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time yeah. on a cat day, you'll be invited to show something off. That's right. Okay, first up, um, if you noticed on Google+, Plus, we have a couple new graphics. They're not going to display that great because I'm putting them through um, this interface layers right now. Layers of layers of Yeah, yeah. There's, there's animated GIFs that are going to be turned into graphics okay, and seriously. turned into videos. Anyways, we have a couple new graphics. Um, this oh, is on nice. Google+. Plus. Yeah, like little Adabot. You can ask all sorts of things. Adabot pops up. Doop -doop -doop. Whoa. Yeah. So this is on Adabot's our... Adabot's got, got great shoulders. Yeah. This is, right, this is on, our, on our Google+, Plus page right now. And then we have a show and tell banner. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. That's a nice little animation. Hello. Yeah. Hello. So we got that going on now. Okay. Um, you'll notice we have a bunch of new graphics that we're putting on to the show. Um, Sweet. So back to paying bills here and the big news. The code is OSCON. O-S-C-O-N. And here's the reason why. Lady Ada, you won and was awarded an open source award from the O'Reilly Open Source Convention. I Congratulations. Love wearing, I love wearing that Skull t-shirt. You, uh, you, you, you were uh, recognized. Uh, there's a yearly awards cer ceremony. And you were given an open source award. And it's uh, on, in the mail on its way to you. And uh, we couldn't talk about it until now. Yeah. But O'Reilly sent an e email and they said, congratulations. Uh, you were nominated by the open source community for all oh. the stuff that you do in the world of open source. That means cool. that you're, you're putting out code, you're putting I out I put hardware. out code all the time. Yeah. And, all uh, I do all day is write code, <laughs> and, uh, design hardware. Yeah. And, My eyes hurt. And uh, there was people, I think, from uh, some Perl efforts, some Py, uh, Python efforts. Uh, the rest of the folks in the past have been really uh, awesome people. So uh, congratulations, Lady Ada, maybe everyone in the chat. I can tell you congratulations. Thank you for nominating me yeah. winning. And, and the last year... I wasn't there. I was here. But yeah, last year, cool. the, the previous year winners helped select this year. Oh. So other open source people, which I always thought is... I always think it's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. I'll think about some people who also deserve some awards. Yeah. Well, after we got um, the EFF award, the Pioneer Award, a couple of years ago, we um, worked really hard to nominate Bunny Wang. Yeah. And then he got an award, so it was like, sweet. Yeah. He really, he deserves it way more than me. Yeah, there's a couple ideas that uh, we've tossed around for conferences and as you've collected awards for all the cool stuff you've done. I think a conference, you know, there's lots of private invite only conferences. We don't really yeah. go to those. Um, but if, if, if someone does go to those, I think you're only allowed to go once and the next time you go, you have to pick the person who's going to replace you, and it has to be really good. Yeah, that'd be I cool. I thought it would be a good idea, and I also think like the awards world would be uh, would benefit from from the people who get the awards to to. Uh, and I think that happens organically, anyways. Like you got an EFF Pioneer Award, and for years we've told Bunny, you, you have this is the one award that you deserve so much for all the stuff that you've done, Bunny. So he's working on an open source laptop now. He did the HDMI thing. He hacked the Xbox. He did Chumby. He like he is he's the reason that we're all here. Uh, open source hardware couldn't exist without him. Yeah. So, That's cool. anyways, uh, cool stuff. All right. Okay. Adafruit news. We added a new engineer to Adafruit. Actually, I added the quadcopter. <laughs> I don't know who that other guy is. I guess he's just holding the quadcopter. We now have a drone on staff. Yeah, no, no we I'm don't. just kidding. I'm no, kidding. This, I'm is, kidding. this kidding. is Frank, and Frank just joined at Adafruit as an engineer. Yes. Um, he also posted up um, on our blog. He made a cool pebble um, watch face, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. That but, actually looks pretty good. Yeah, but um, I'm going to do a um, kind of a, a world collide thing. I'm going to explain why this is really interesting. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's hear boo-loop, it. Boo-loop, boo-loop, boo-loop. Yeah. So this is why this is interesting. Okay. Flashback. Yeah. How so, far are we flashing back to? Well, let's first flash back to maybe five years ago or so. Um, Frank was uh, order number 6840. Yeah, it was like the 6,000th order. Yeah. Hey, hey, pro tip, by the way, I started at order 1,000. Oh, okay. So, so actually, it's, so it's 5,000. Yeah, I'll tell you why, because I didn't want somebody to be like, I'm order number two. Oh my God, like that's so scary. So I started with really? 1,000. Okay. So it was a little bit less yeah. traumatic for the first two people who ordered. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm putting my credit card on this lady site. And it's like order number six. It's like, oh man, yeah. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be. It's like, that's cool. yeah. Uh, Sorry. So, so Frank, Frank was in high school, I believe. Yeah. And uh, he was ordering electronics and he went off to school to become an engineer. Yeah. He was finished with school. He's an engineer, Waterloo. And uh, he posted up on the Adafruit jobs boards about the skills that he had. He had all sorts of cool open source hardware projects and cool code. And when we saw him post up on the job board, we said, oh my gosh, he's someone that we, we think we want to hire to, to do some work with us. So we started doing some work and we're like, wow, this is working out really great. You should join the staff as an engineer. So we made the jobs board um, for the world, but we also made it for us. And that's a really good example of uh, someone using the jobs board for um, getting up their skills and for us being able to find cool makers. Because if they're able to post on the jobs board and they were a customer of Adafruit, you know what? It's probably someone we may, we may want to hire one day. So um, go backwards even more. Nine years ago, um, I started a site called Hackaday. You're Which we'll talk about later also. Well, I'm going to just skip to it now. Huh. Yeah. Wow, you're just jumping around. Yeah. So I started a site called Hackaday. And Hackaday was started um, because I wanted to find, I wanted to have a place online where people would post their cool projects. Because I, I remember when it came out, I remember the first thing I thought was like, there is no way you'll find one Hackaday. Yeah, everyone told me that. I remember when everyone said, there's no way you're going to have enough projects to, to, sh to show that someone's made something once a day. So on the Adafruit site, we average over 30 posts a day. Average. I know, even I can't keep up with it. <laughs> Over 30 posts a day. There's so many things that people are building. So anyways, I started Hackaday. And uh, I was writing it in Gadget, and the how-to series I was doing took off. I was working at Popular Science as a, as a editor doing uh, their how-to section. And it was just like, wow, I, I think you know, how-tos are going to be a big deal. And one of the reasons I wanted to do it is because I wanted to meet other cool makers and maybe possibly one day uh, hire them because I thought in the future I'd be working in an electronics company. <laughs> In some way. Nice work. Yeah, it worked out. So, uh, Paint Your Dragon, Phil B., um, he was a writer at Hackaday. Okay. So, um, he uh, wrote at Hackaday and he now works at Adafruit. So, this is, this is the He's thing. lead Blinky engineer. Yeah, he is. And uh, Caleb Kraft, who recently left Hackaday, he joined EE Times as their editor in chief. And, uh, uh, he's done some stuff with us in the past too. Yeah. So really, really neat. And so for the folks out there who are always thinking, oh, maybe I should start a website or a resource for makers, um, and you're wondering like what can happen, these are all the types of things that could happen. These are all really good things. Yeah. So speaking of. Uh, okay. So you know all these people. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, this is part of the story. This maker world. That, Wait, what's that uh, to do with Frank? Well, because um, what this has to do with Frank is we made a jobs board to find cool people. Yeah. I made Hackaday a long time ago to find cool people. So you just like hanging out with cool people. Uh, this is a, if they if they if they think Hackaday is cool, I want to work with them. If they think using our jobs were and, buy, and getting kits from Adafruit is cool and doing open source hardware, I want to hang out with them. Yeah. So uh, speaking of, uh, so Hackaday just sold. The amount is undisclosed, but it's probably at least three hundred fifty thousand or four hundred fifty thousand. I gave the site away. I left. I'm just like, here you go. Yeah. Um, I went off to do Make Magazine with Dale and Mark and Sean and. Dan and Tim, and like all these people, um, and Cherry. Uh, so uh, it's now owned by SupplyFrame, who owns FineChips.com. And they also sponsor the EEV blog. Oh, is that so? That's so. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so what's interesting is this seems like the best home for it. I'm very pleased to hear that they're doing this. Yeah. This, it could have went, went to really bad owners. Who knows? Yeah. So this is really cool. So that is maker history. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Next up, uh, real quick programming note that we really like. Dazuki posted up their documentation guide, how to make great documentation. Really cool guide. They made a guide on making guides. That's cool. Things like, welcome, before you write, 
Crystal clarity, communicate with style, audience, photograph the process. Using other visuals, organize your content, legal requirements, publishing after you write. This is really cool. Read this, documentation is the hardest thing. It is. Get I've actually a lot of documentation next week and I am not looking forward to it. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, next up. Pack of the mailbag. You, you skipped on this one. What? You skipped on this Yeah, I know. I'm skipping around. Pack in the mailbag. We're going to okay. read. Yeah, we're going to read the stuff. Here is a letter from a customer. I received my parcel last week. I just wanted to thank you for making everything you made for me. You're the best customer service I've Alex. ever seen. Yeah. All right. Next up, big news in the world of Adafruit. We hit 4 million views on the YouTube channel. 4 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 Up 850%. Since uh, last year, and we have thirty-two thousand subscribers. Yeah, and good. we have awesome videos. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. Um, so thank you very much. And speaking of, everybody every week in the chat has said, "Have you finally decided on Cappy?" And so Cappy is our capacitor. Um, Cappy is a puppet and also a character in Circuit Playground. Yeah, um, he's sitting over there. I can see him. Um, but we need to do tryouts. Um, okay, one of why? the things that we do at Adafruit is um, we're not going to hire actors and people who just do puppeteering. No, 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 we have plenty of talented people here. So we have... Um, in-house talent. We have in-house talent, we have Punk artists. Punk talent. We have artists, we have musicians, we have playwrights, we have comedians, we have pu we actually even have people who do puppeteering. So what we did, we did open tryouts in the company for puppets. And so Cappy is one of the first ones. And Cappy, yep. Cappy has like a... I don't get to be a puppet because I'm the live person character. You're the, yeah, you're the yeah. only one that can't be a puppet. And I run Adabot behind the scenes um, because, you know, that's what I like doing, so okay. yeah, I usually run it away. So, um, and then we film with Colin. So here are the tryouts. I'm going to share these Kay. with everyone. Let's see this thing. And then we'll tell you who, because a lot of people want to know who got it. One. Yeah, there it is. I probably should have put some music before the start. I'm Colin, and that's it. I. A capacitor is a passive two-terminal electrical component used to store energy electrostatically in an electrical field. All right, I'm Phil, and I'm going to be uh, reading the role of Cappy. All capacitors contain at least two electrical conductors separated by a dielectric. There be one common construction for all metal foils separated by a thin layer of insulating film. Just peek up and say, say, say your, your, you know, Martin. Yeah. And then, then you can, yeah. Martin here. Auditioning for Cappy. <laughs> <laughs> Capacitors are used as parts of electrical circuits in many common electrical devices. <laughs> How's my pirate sound? <laughs> Not sure how I did with that. This is Tony. Uh, auditioning for Cappy. Kip. Hi. A capacitor is a passive two-terminal electrical component used to store energy and electrostatically in an electric field. All capacitors contain at least two electrical conductors separated by a dielectric. Uh, Nathan. I, a capacitor is a passive two-terminal electrical component used to store energy electrostatically in an electric field. All capacitors contain at least two electrical conductors separated by dielectric. Okay. Hi, I'm Ian Chain, and I'm going to be reading Cappy. <laughs> All capacitors contain at least two electrical conductors separated by a dielectric. There may be one common construction of metal foils separated by a thin layer of insulating film. Capacitors are used as part of electrical circuits in many common electrical devices. Um, all right, uh, I'm Thomas, and I am auditioning for the part of uh, Cappy, the capacitor. <coughs> <coughs> Oi, a capacitor is a passive two-terminal electrical component used to store energy electrostatically in an electric field. All capacitors contain at least two electrical conductors separated by a dielectric. There be one construction of metal foils separated by a thin layer of insulating film. Capacitors are used as parts of electrical circuits in many common electrical devices. <laughs> Right. 
Okay. Okay. And we're pleased. The tension yeah. is so high. The envelope, please. Yeah. And the capacitor goes to Tom. Tom. Tom, with Nathan as alt in case something happens to Tom. Okay. Tom is also in charge of receiving. Tom is a director here at Adafruit, and he's in charge of all receiving and incoming logistics at Adafruit. All the boxes that come in, Tom is in charge of. Yeah. And he almost never makes a mistake. No, he, he does an excellent job. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's awesome. Yeah. Tom is a rock. He is, yeah, he is, he is like the core of Adafruit. Adafruit would not survive if it wasn't for Tom. Yeah. He does one and of the most important jobs. And now he's Cappy the capacitor. And now he's a North yeah. British capacitor. And what a lot of people don't know is Tom does the music in the beginning of the show and for most of the videos. That's Bartleby's. right. That's right. He, he is Bartleby's. He's we also have, Frog. We have, but he's also Bartleby's. There's really, multiple bands. We have really talented people here. They, they just ex exude talent. Okay. Next up, we're going to keep moving here. We're chatting tonight. Um, next up, there is a cool article about New York City by Mark Barrows, who visited here recently. Is New York the next maker epicenter? And then Mark talks yeah, sure about then Mark talks about all the companies. I think it is. Uh, there are so there's a 3D pr 3D printing capital of the world. That is true. It's a fact. There's more 3D printing going on here. In Technically, New York than yes, else. that is true. Right. And he said something very interesting that I yeah. really like to hear. Are you ready? Okay, let's hear this thing. Um, he visited Adafruit. He's, he visited all these maker. He companies. did. He hung out here like two Here's hours. Here's what he said. Adafruit, innovative commerce. And I'm just going to read the first part. Adafruit, a maker-focused website, has the potential to become the Zappos of the electronics market. Thank you so much, Mark. That is kind of what we're doing. We that's have right. our roots in designing beautiful open source hardware. Yeah. So um, that's what we try to do. We, we're crazy about customer support here. We actually will we'll do anything we're and everything crazy. To, to help everyone. We have the best customer support. How many five-star reviews do we have on well, Google? Well, that's right. Through, uh, over a thousand five-star and, and pretty much nothing after that. And then offer. nothing. It's like all five-star yeah. reviews and then like, that's it. That's all, yeah. we, that's all we got. The thing about, uh, and this is, here's, you know, because tonight's kind of maker business heavy. Here's the thing about customer service with electronics. So everything breaks. It's electronics. Just like shoes. Like shoes just kind of don't fit, even if it's the right size. And this is why Zappos, they pick the hardest thing. They're like, I don't know, shoes. So like DIY kits. Yeah. It's hard too. Maybe you have to really put hard. it together. There's code and people have to put stuff together and there's so much stuff you have to do. So we decided if we're going to convince people to do engineering and get involved in science, technology, engineering, art, and math, we should make sure that experience is as good as possible, and that just means having really great customer support. So um, and we answer emails instantly within like a few minutes. The forums, the uh, Adafruit customer support forums, we have uh, four or five full-time engineers in there constantly. Uh, staff engineers. Yeah, staff. And it's all public, Paid. so you can search it. Yep. Um, we, we made a really big decision a long time ago. Let's put all the customer support public. So and we have can the best learning system. It. Best learning system. All or, the documentation is 99.9% yeah. .9 of the documentation is on our learning system All our now. stuff is on GitHub. GitHub. We, we do this show. We have Google+. We There's have Twitter. no we register to get the data sheet. We register to yeah. get support. It's like, it's you like... You never liked that when you were doing electronics. No, it's like it's all there. Everything's searchable. Yeah. You just have to log into and then spam or the, avoidance, whatever. But like, yeah. You have to prove you're not a robot. You have to prove you're not a robot. That's all. Yeah. We give support. And then the last that. thing is we like to set a really positive tone. You've been part of electronic communities that were really crummy. They didn't they didn't like anything. They, they, were, very, they, they were very mean to me. They, they didn't like girl doing electronics. They didn't mm, like that stuff. So yes. we decided, let's make our own really cool community and, and be really inclusive. Yeah. And so we have our big community. We on, on have every Plus. kind of person. Yeah. So anyways, and cat. Yeah. Cats of engineering. So, cats are welcome. We're a cat company. OK. Anyways, next up, uh, some news in the world of open source hardware. I'm just going to go through these really fast. We're going we're gonna to run out of time tonight, Lady Ada. Uh, News and open source hardware, OSCON, uh, sponsor, get tickets. We sponsored it. There's a new uh, survey, sign up for it. The badge, you'll get it. It's e-ink. It's happening. Sweet. Yeah. Next up, Arduino news. So um, we're starting to see people make really cool projects with the sous vide Duino. And by projects, we mean food. Yeah. And the cool thing is, the maker said, I didn't have to modify the rice cooker at all, I used the Adafruit Suviduino. Uh, and uh, here it is. This is the kit that we have. This is some of the stuff that you can make. Check it out. Next up, some drone news. I wanted to get... News this, and drones. This, news and drones. This is our little happy drone thing. So first up, there's the Instagram. It's called Dronestagram, where drones can post their photos that they like and share cool. it with each other. And then this other news story, I wanted to talk about this just for a minute. So this company um, is uh, uh, DGI. 
And uh, this is the first time I've ever heard of this. In the firmware, the firmware won't allow you to go to Tiananmen Square. Yeah. So the firmware will keep these... There's like a little GPS square that's like you can't... It, it's, it's location censorship in firmware. Ah, what a weird new thing that we have to start thinking about. That's cool and weird. So, and kind of awful, so but I, it's cool and so weird. So when I wrote this up, I said, okay, great. That's very interesting. So they don't want these drones to go there. It's a consumer drone that you can just buy in the store. And, yeah. You know, they don't want these drones to go over to Tiananmen Square. Okay, cool. Who asked them? Why? That's an interesting question. But the other one is, what's going to be the first American company to do that? Will it be airports? Will it be certain landmarks who will do that? Will everyone then switch to open source? Will so they the can White always, House? They can always I mean, mod the firmware so there's no restrictions. Who knows? This is so interesting and so weird. It doesn't get weirder than this. Okay. Yeah. Talk about yourself. The other thing is, when we were walking to work, when, when you and I were walking, to work, we saw this. Here's my little video. It's a box yeah, I guess they're probably looking for footage near the security cams or the traffic cams. Look at you. Yeah, this is fun. Look at me. Look at you. Look at me. Look at you. Oh, okay, drone pal. Yeah. Next up, uh, we have an awesome photo shoot. So, as many people know, I collect old Next computers. And uh, John Janier and I team up on cool projects. And what you're about to see is not photoshopped at all. In fact, it looks photoshopped. In fact, it's, but it is not photoshopped. In fact, it's jetted. Do you want me to grab this? Yeah, so I'm going to show the photos. So this is um, a vintage Next computer. Um, this one doesn't work. I have, I, you know, I have a collection of Next stuff that does work. This doesn't work. And so um, we had our friend Waterjet. Well, it definitely doesn't work now. Yeah, we had our friend Waterjet a circle out. So what you're seeing is a water jetted Next. And uh, this is a photo set from John Janier. And uh, I'm really happy about this because I wanted a piece of art. So this is, uh, this is the next here, you can see. And uh, I've wanted to do this for years. Yeah, and this is, uh, you can look through it. Yeah, look at that, beautiful magnesium uh, casing. Yeah, this is a really beautiful case. And so um, this, is, uh, this is a new, you know, it's not Photoshop, it's jetted. Adobe just required jetted, jetting. Yeah. Jetting. Your water jet needs an update. Yeah. Uh, do you want to install the update? Now? I like how it like cut through the hard drive. <laughs> yeah, water jet don't care. Water, water jet, jet keeps going. Water okay. does not care. So that's our photo set for the week. I just connector's really beautiful. It's cut through this connector. Yeah. It just doesn't. And this EE prom. Yeah, or EE prom. Yeah. So I'm gonna hang this up on the wall. Yeah, 1991. This is, this is when this was made. Yeah. And uh, yeah, next. Uh, that's how I learned computers. So I really like next up. Okay. Next up, uh, Adafruit learning system. Lady Ada, we got some stuff in the Adafruit Learning System. Yeah. Learn on the world. We did a lot of updates. Yeah. yeah, what's going on? We did, um, we've updated a lot of the tutorials, moved them from the old LadyAda.net wiki. This week we did the standalone AVR chip programmer, which we also have as a shield. This is awesome. This is how I program chips in house. It's the yeah. fastest way possible to program a chip. Okay, some BeagleBone updates and tutorials. Oh, we also, yeah, we did um, update the tutorial for the BeagleBone IO um, library, which uh, Justin Cooper has been working on. Hardcore, we basically adapted, we created a, a Python GPIO and uh, extras, you know, like uh, accessories hardware peripherals uh, library that's in the same style as the Raspberry Pi one, so it's called Adafruit BBIO. There's another BBIO, so this one is the Adafruit BBIO, just don't want to have any confusion. Um, and we've added UART support and SPI support, and, and what's neat about the BBIO stuff, it, it actually takes care of the device tree overlay um, management for you, which I still don't completely understand. I don't understand the kernel 3.8 device tree overlay. I have to understand it one day. But if you don't, like I do, or if you don't, like I don't, uh, the BBIO library takes care of it for you. So um, SPI support, UART support, already had I squared C and GPIO support and PWM support and analog read support. So it actually is kind of everything you need. Okay, next. Uh, wearable Wednesday, every Wednesday, the best in the world of wearable electronics. I guess I'll just talk about this. So we've been planning a, a weekly wearable electronics show. It'll be out very soon. It's going to be a lot. Starring. St starring Becky Stern. Starring the Becky Stern. Yeah, so it's, not just a Becky Stern. We have the Becky Stern. Yeah. There's Do not accept any invitations. This is the Becky Stern. Yeah, there's other ones, but this is the most internet famous one. This is the Becky does Stern. wearable electronics. So um, uh, it's going to be a live show just like Ask an Engineer. Yeah, because just wearables. Because it's and hard. And you, you did a demo of this a few weeks ago for Element yeah. 14 for the wearable sure. contest. So that was our your little uh, it was so popular. spec check. Yeah. And we really liked uh, wearables. Okay.
All right, watch for that in a Here few weeks. This is our project of the week. It's the LED punk collar that Lady Abe is about to show. This is a kit you can build. It shows everything. Here is Rissa. She is part of the wearable electronics project uh, uh, group. And here is a video. Getting bored of the same old punk fashion and want something new to DIY? Get it. Make it yourself. So you can glow. And glow. And glow. Punk LED Collar Tutorial on learn.adafruit.com with a kit available from Adafruit. Move in right along. Wait, you want, do you want to turn, turn this, this thing on? on? Yeah, yeah, turn yeah. This on. There you go. Look at that. So yeah, it um, it has. It's actually. Um, I made a collar just like this. Ooh, when I was um, in college, using blue LEDs, and we they they were like four dollars each. Yeah. Um, or something, or three bucks each. But I bought some from DigiKey, and they weren't even diffused. I kind of like scratched them up to try to diffuse them. And um, I remade that collar and I wore it around a lot, like, you know, in school and at Burning Man, and I really like it. And um, so I thought it would be a really fun project for wearables. What I would like about this project is there's no microcontroller. Yeah. It's just um, a bunch of LEDs, 10 LEDs, and these are the big, chunky, diffused ones, which look really cool. Yeah. It looks cool even off. And then um, we do it, we're doing it in red. It runs off a single coin cell. Um, the one I built a while ago used a LiPo, which I thought is, is neat, but maybe not quite ready for yeah. most people because it requires charging and stuff. This one's off of a coin cell and uh, it has a little adjustable on-off slash brightness, you know, adjustment pot so you can kind of dim it or brighten it as necessary. And uh, yeah, this is like a, a fun project. Yeah. Um, you wore that when we went to, well, the one that you made the blue at one. Burning Man. When we, when we yeah, Burning I used Man. to, I wore it at Burning Man because actually I've, I've never seen anyone like it so it was really good for identifying me in a crowd of people. Yeah. But um, yeah, so now we have it in red. You could also possibly make it in other colors, but we're, red looks the best because the forward voltage of red LEDs is less than the coin cell. If you put in two coin cells, you could probably, yeah. or a LiPo battery, you could do it with blue or white. So maybe we'll do that in the future. But uh, it's a really fun project. It's really easy. It's a great learning to solder project. And yes, something you can wear to a party. Yeah, we'll revisit this shortly as we get to new products. Next up is 3D Thursday. Every Thursday, the best and the most. You guys posted printing. like 40 posts. There is a million things going on in 3D printing. So I only can pick a few. So here's my big news of the week. Microsoft Store has MakerBots. You can go there, buy filament, buy the actual things. Next That's up. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Cubify, print out your own little action figurine. Star Trek Next Generation, personalized. You can be your own little figure. Yeah. And then last up, if you are morbid like us, you can get yourself cremated and then turned into a 3D printed record. It's a company that does this and uh, you get a little 3D printed thing of yourself and then you get um, then you get turned into a record and then they can play. Rest in vinyl. Okay. Rest in vinyl. That is just yeah. pretty punk. Mm. Next, uh, Pi Day, all the things cool in the world of Pi. So this one I thought you would enjoy, Lady Ada. I don't know okay. if you know, because we, we have so many Pi posts. So Pi I Day. Know. Pie day I'm really behind on my pie, pie day, it's like drinking out of a fire hose, but it's made of a pie, and pies are coming out of the fire hose. I know. It's a pie. It's out of control. Yeah. All right, what was, what was this week's okay, so this toast was, of the week? This one was pretty neat. Someone did a really neat thing with a pager. They used a Raspberry Pi to do pager message sniffing. And this is relevant to your interests because you've done... This is, the, this is what that was shown on the, um, the show and tell. This is the same thing, the RTL 2.8. 3.2 USB dongle. That's right. Yeah. So software defined radio. Yeah. We should probably get one of those. Yeah. That sounds cool. And so um, you did a project where you figured out uh, the pager tra uh, traffic. And we actually met uh, our friend Josh runs the pager network. Here yeah. Here. What I actually did is I took a pager. Because, you know, all pagers can listen into all pager traffic. Yeah. There's no encryption. So you can actually open up a pager and then use that as the receiver for um, re receiving pager data, and then you just use a uh, FTDI friend or something to uh, grab the data off. I think that's what I did. No, no, I did a serial port. Yeah. Serial port adapter, but maybe he's FTDI friend. Yeah, it's a very popular video on our site. All right, uh, next up, before we go on to new products, I have a continuation of the uh, color glove 
project. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, something that I started, and then uh, you helped, and then Colin worked on. So this is uh, the continuation of this project. This is the uh, Adafruit Flora. It's a color sensor that, that looks at the color. There's an LED that shows the color it sees. And then this is our codec board that has MIDI in it. And uh, this is going to be a live demo. I'm going to play it. This is a speaker right here. And uh, I'm going to go over to the overhead. And okay. uh, I'm going to uh, go over here. Get this book out of the way. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Um, yeah, it'll focus in a second. Here we go. Okay. So this is uh, this little codec thing that tells you the um, that shows you colors. Yeah, that was from when I did color photography. Yeah, and so I carried it around for like twenty years. And so what you're seeing is a new type of musical instrument that uh, I'm working on. Um, this is just another demo version of it, and this is um, it sees color and then it turns it into music. So before I just had a little piezo. Colin just worked on this. And uh, now we're going to... But now uh, it does full MIDI. Now it does full MIDI. So uh, I'm going to play this music, and you'll be able to hear it uh, shortly. And so you can see... And it's smart. It knows that there's no color. It's, it's, it, yeah. I wrote this little code chunk so it would only play it when it got high saturation color. And then I'm going to play your hair. Ready? Wait, what? That's pretty consistent. The weirdest one hour okay. on live internet you'll ever see. I, so this is, I need a shower. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, so that's the, that's the project. This is what we're working on. We don't have a name for it yet, but uh, it's a musical instrument we're developing here at Adafruit. Okay. Yeah. I had like 10 minutes of not like running Adafruit time, and so this is the first thing. I set up my little desk and I quickly made this. Yeah. Whew. Okay. On to bigger and better things. Okay, Lady Ada, the code is OSCON. Code's OSCON because you won this, uh, this award. It's crazy. Open source award. They don't do closed source awards. I hope it's just like a, a gigantic 3D printed Tarsier or something. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe it's a real Tarsier. Those are cute. Oh, they're cute. Um, yeah, okay. they're big eyes. All right, new products time. There's a song. Yeah. This is from David Smith, who sent the uh, music in. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, new it's products. A composition. New products. We're going to go through. So, John Janier is our photographer here at Adafruit, our director of imaging. He shot a bunch of new photos. These aren't new products at all, but I'm just going to show them real quick. But they're great new photos. The Midnight Hacker. Multi tool. I love it because it's got wire strippers. Yeah. So handy. We laser cut these here. Next up. Big battery. It's yeah. big. A lot of people notice all of our photos are shot on black. We think they look fantastic. Next up. Boring cable. Yes, it used to be cable, but you know what? Yeah. Comes in Adafruit Black. It comes in Adafruit yeah. Black with, with gold uh, plating. Next up. High quality power supply. Now, see, that's the best breadboard photo. That's I've a lovely ever seen. breadboard. Look at, look at that, it's nice. Yeah. It's just kind of floating there. Yeah, look how beautiful it is. Okay. It looks like it's, it's on a pool of mercury. And you're like, how big is it? Oh, here's a quarter. Let's see. All right. And then also a teeny breadboard. Yeah, okay. First new product of the night. Okay. Yeah. We have a new book by Jeremy Blum yeah. Bloom. It is awesome. It's got all sorts of hardcore Arduino stuff. And it actually is a very good beginner stuff, but it also goes into more advanced stuff. Um, I think we have a sample chapter post up. Usually we do. If not, check it out. There's lovely fritzing diagrams. Um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that uh, you can build with data fritz stuff. Yeah. Now you're probably saying, Man, it would be fantastic if this was the giveaway tonight and it was signed by the author. It is. What does it say? It says, this is from Jeremy, to Adafruit community, you guys rock. Okay. Very nice. And, just want to point this out, Jeremy dedicated the book. He said, to my grandmother, his lifelong curiosity and encouragement inspired me to be a better person every day. What a cool 
thing to yes. send you. So uh, yeah, there was a, a Amp Hour meetup, and John Janeer and Matt and Jeremy and some other people were there. Um, this is what the giveaway is going to be tonight. I like this book. This book is good. It's it's yeah. like it's for people who want to like do stuff and they want to maybe take it a little bit further. And I really like the diagrams. I actually this is kind of what I, I pick books by is if the diagrams are good. Yeah. Usually the product is very good. A lot of people know Jeremy from his YouTube videos and all sorts of things. And yeah. Beyond. Yeah, okay. Nice. Cool book. Features Android stuff too. All right, Lady Ada. What's this? This is a. Uh, it's a reshoot. Oh, it's a reshoot. Okay, sorry. I'm in the reshoot zone. All right. That's cool. All right, I'm just gonna back out of the reshoot zone. Just pretend that happened before. We'll fix that in the post, as I say. <laughs> all right. Anyways. Next um, up. This what is, is this? a new product. These are some diffused piranha LEDs. These are actually going to go in the new mini pop kit that I'm working on. Yeah. Uh, but we also have them in the store. Piranha LEDs these are actually going to go in the new mini pop kit that I'm working on. Yeah. Uh, but we also have them in the store. These are incredibly bright, and what I like about them is they have these four legs that make them very easy to solder, compared to um, five millimeter LEDs or ten millimeter. The, the pins are so close; they're actually very hard to like plug into a breadboard or solder. These lay flat on a breadboard, which I think is lovely, um, and they're just heck of bright. They're just super, super bright, and it'll look. At them. Yeah, this is a lovely photo that shows um, the color and like trying to balance it with resistors. Yeah, but let's do this live. Let's do this live. So these are them, and this is them running off of two AA batteries. It's actually not um, terribly bright. Let me see if I can um, grab some five volt power from over here and make this a little bit brighter. Because okay, you're gonna you're gonna turn this up too. I'm gonna turn this 11, up. Yeah. Well, I think five volts is kind of more uh, more where it should be, because that'll actually be like really bright. Okay, that's what it really looks like. It's it's when you when you uh, put 20 milliamps through. So um, yeah, you've got red, green, and blue in it. It's like 3,000 or more millicandela. Um, they plug into a breadboard nicely, and the cool thing is is that the color is very diffused. So it has a really, it's, as you can tell, it's like the color looks kind of even from all angles. Um, most LEDs, especially super bright ones, the, the light comes in at a very sharp angle, so they're just blinding, and then nothing. These mix the colors in very nicely. And if we look at the photo. Which one? Uh, on the breadboard, I guess, or the one that's just on the quarter. You want to look at the photo with the quarter? Yeah. This one? That one. Yeah, it's, it's made out of this kind of milky white plastic, so it diffuses very, very nicely. So this is really good for if you're doing um, PWMing and you want to color mix nicely. Okay. Next up, uh, we showed this off during <laughs> the uh, wearable segment, but this is the kit. This yes. is a new product. This is actually a, a kit It's a lovely we kit. We got really high quality leather collars um, from this guy in San Francisco that makes really high quality leather collars. Um, and uh, our bright red LEDs, and you get extra batteries, some suede, everything you need except the tools to make this collar kit. So. I really like it. It's a fun kit. Yeah. It's an easy project. It takes maybe an hour or two. Yeah. Uh, just punch some holes and yeah. thread the LEDs through, and you're pretty much done. And then, you know, when we have John do photos, we always like to do kind of an artistic photo. So here is the photo. Is that blood? Is it water? Is it sweat? Who knows? John knows. <laughs> All right. All right, those are the new products this week, Lady Ada. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of engineering, so we're a little bit light on new products, but we okay. have a lot of great stuff coming in soon. Let me just uh, get us some new products here. Okay. There is the music. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of really cool stuff coming out. Yeah. You guys, I am so lucky. I see all the stuff that comes out of her head. You're going to freak out when you see it. There is so much stuff. But speaking of, do you think we can do a little bit of a sneak peek? Yeah, Somebody's I guess not so. out yet? Don't ask? I guess so. Really? Yeah, maybe. Okay. I guess that'd be okay. I knew you'd say that, so I had some images prepared. All right, it's Wait, not what? out yet. It's not out yet. Don't ask. Here's some stuff. The first thing I'm going to show you a video. This is the video we shot here. I saw this on the okay. blog. This is all these blinkies. The Neopixel Shield. And then How's it going to be controlled though? This is the upcoming this platform thing here? that we're developing called Trinket. Yes. More on that later. All right. So this is um, this is a new product that um, we're working on here, uh, Lady Ada. Yeah. And it's called Trinket. Yeah, just one second. And we, uh, oh, man, just to give it. folks uh, an overview of a product roadmap, I guess you're not, you know, we're an open source company. I guess we could just talk about this all the time. Yeah. Um, so we have Flora, and we love Flora. And then the next um, wearable 
that comes after Flora is Gemma. Gemma's smaller. Yeah. Does different things. Sorry, just fixing up my demo. Yeah. Yeah, Gemma is uh, almost done. It's actually part of the trinket family. It's just rounded. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, the the even smaller one is trinket. So trinket. Flora. Mm. Gemma. Gemma. Trinket. And then, I, well, well Je I think Trinket and Gemma are not that different. So Gemma is like a small version of the flora. Yeah. But the Trinket is kind of like um, a breadboardable version. It's a little bit like a teeny, like, Borduino. Yeah. Do you so think you can, you can show yeah. uh, a little bit about Trinket? Okay. Yeah, Let's go to the overhead. Okay. Let me, let me get down. It's so hard for this camera to focus on this tiny board. All so right. this is um, the Trinket board that uh, I've designed. And it's got an AT1085, and we're using um, the uh, Arduino. Actually, released a little like plug-in for controlling the AT1085 with the Arduino IDE. And um, uh, Frank actually did a lot of the work in adapting um, the USB Teeny into a bootloader, so it actually looks like a USB Teeny, which is like our, our famous programmer, um, which makes it really easy to program. So you plug it in, and it just like looks like oh, you have a programmer attached. So you don't need a special version of AVR Dude or anything, and um, you just edit the boards file and add the trinket, and it's a little uh, microcontroller, has a USB port, has a little reset button, which I think is cute. Um, it has uh, two LEDs. Maybe I'll plug this in to show it off. Um, there's a green LED. There's a red LED, which won't show up because it's not bootloading, but there's a red LED that is used for bootloading. Actually, this one, I think, will. I have the red LED do something. Um, so yeah, you got red LED, green LED, microcontroller, uh, reset button, um, regulator, and then a couple of passes just to you know protect the LED and stuff. And there's also some mounting holes, and then you can power it from a battery or you can get USB power. And then there's um, five I/O pins. Two of them are shared with USB, but it actually has a lot of stuff going on. There's analog digital conversion. There's digital output. It runs at 16 megahertz. And it's actually um, hardcore enough that it can actually drive, uh, if I can get the pins connected, um, the demo for the 64 um, pixel NeoPixel square. So yeah, I've got the little trinket and it's, it's controlling my little NeoPixels here, making them super colorful. Maybe I'll start from the beginning. Yeah. So yeah, fill is red and then green and then blue. So. Um, it's a party. Yeah. It's cool. So I'll, I'll make it a little bit brighter. I think I you've shown enough. Yeah? Yeah. Well, sorry. So that was it. That's it. Super blinky. There you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 this is a new thing. We're 8x8 eight eight Neo, mat Neo Pixel Matrix. And also the Trinket. Little USB programmable Arduino compatible. Okay. Little guy. You can almost swallow it. Don't do that. At Don't. midnight, I have a post. There's a Wi-Fi chip sensor that goes inside a tooth, and it will tell people if they're eating too much. This is what happens at midnight on the blog at Adafruit. Okay, that's kind of weird. Stop in. Okay. How are they getting reception inside somebody's mouth? Just you got to read the blog tonight. Oh, they have a big tooth. No, it's, a, it's my tiny. Really? Tooth. Okay. Okay. Engineering question times. Here we go. Okay. okay. Whew, speed round. You can ask anything, but it's questions about it's not out yet. Don't yeah. ask because you can't ask questions about. Okay. Ask Someone it. wanted to know when. When do people get to ask engineering questions? Now. And the answer is now. That was an yeah. easy question. So ask your engineering questions. Lady Ada will answer them. All right. How would I set up a personal meeting with Lady Ada? I want to be in New York soon and just want to uh, meet her for a few minutes. That would be awesome. You're meeting me right now. Unfortunately, that is just not scalable. We get a lot of requests for that. So you're talking to Lamore right now. But I'm right the, here. The best way is to show your project on Show and Tell. Yeah, that's the best way. That's right. Because that's when we have the most time. Yeah, we have a factory. We don't have visitors. Uh, the building, we had to agree not to have retail traffic, not to have yeah, so visitors. Yeah, it's, it's actually like an industrial warehouse yeah. building. So uh, we love folks. We'll be at Maker Fair. If you want to meet us in person, we'll be at Open Source Hardware But there's no face-to-face -face meeting time. It's just yeah. like, I'm just there. Technology is our friend, so come on the show and tell us your project. Or right here. Okay. We're right here. We're hanging out. Next up. What is show the top. wavelength of okay. IR needed to, bland, uh, to blind a standard CCD? 850 nanometer? Question mark. 
Um, yeah, something around 850 is probably good. I mean, it depends on the CCD, but remember, you need a lot of light, so you'll need like a three to five watt output. So yeah. you need a really, really big LED to really. Okay. I don't if, think you damage it, you just temporarily blind it. If the USB teeny ISP is connected to a circuit and USB port and the jumper to use the power is not in place, is the circuit still mains earth reference through the USB port? Yes. Okay. All grounds are connected. Okay. And so they're connected to the computer. So yeah, right. the only the only way to avoid that uh, any connection at all is to disconnect whatever other power source you have, program the chip, and then you can float it. Next or up. you can get a USB isolator. Those are really expensive. Is it possible to run Minesweeper on an Arduino? Minesweeper? Yeah, you know that, um, that, that uh, Windows game? Yeah, you, you, you could port it. You'd have to write the code for it, but the, the software itself, I mean, if you could design the game, you could run it on yeah. an LCD. We have a lot of color LCD shields that almost certainly could do it. Yeah. Next question. This one's for me. When is the C is for when is C is for capacitor release date? The video. The answer is um, so we were approached by some TV networks to do um, Circuit Playground as a television show. Yeah. And you probably heard of the networks that would want to do this. We said no because we want to have a we want to really make these great. And so the only downside is it just takes a, a, a couple months. So B is for battery took a really long time because we wanted to have the, the lemon battery. It took a really long time to do the animation, the script, but now it's out forever and it's good forever. Yeah. Um, when it's know, ready. When it's ready. So that's when, that's when it'll be out. We're, we're working on it. Um, next up, any plans, dev plans for Google Glass in the future? Um, we don't have Google Glass. They wouldn't give we, us any. We can't get Google Glass, so the they plans said no. Are they said, no. you guys. <laughs> Are too creepy. No <laughs> they didn't say that. Um, we did ask for a, a Google Glass, and we said we had a very specific use. We said we wanted to use Google Glass as we were doing um, Circuit Playground, our educational puppet show for kids. Not cool. We're not. Maybe we're not interfam internet famous enough. They said no. Yeah. Okay. So next up, I covered your LED color on uh, uh, punk. Uh, your LED punk color making someone said that's so not punk. What's your response to that? DIY is punk. That's actually the definition of punk. Complaining on the internet. It's not punk. It's not punk. Doing a live video show. I think that like is like we're like we're screwing the man. It's late. Yeah. I would I would play. We're not, we're um, not, we're not, we're I would play like Misfits, but like we would get shut down off YouTube because it'd be if I could play music in the yeah. background. Uh, it would be like the Strokes, but they All would right. not let us. I want to build an open source racing wheel controller. Where can I find USB specs for the default driver support? Where where can they find USB specs for what? The default drivers support. For what drivers? For an open source racing wheel controller. So maybe, I don't know. You should probably, um, you could use a USB sniffer. We have a USB sniffer tutorial using the Beagle USB, which is a hardware USB sniffer. That's actually the easiest way to, in my opinion, to get the data about what is being sent. It could be an HID device. It could be a custom customer device. I don't know. I never use this driving wheel thing. Okay, next up. Um, do you know of any cheap 5 gigahertz 802.11an chips available in the market? The TIC3000 is only 2.4 gigahertz. I'll tell you what the cheapest one is. There is none. Okay. What advice can you give for a maker business that worry about people getting hurt by, with their products? Fires, do you need special expensive lawyer? Is a, is a Yule enough? Um, no, if you sell products, um, you should worry about that and you should You're talk. You're always liable. You should always talk to a lawyer. No Yule will protect you from liability, by yeah, the way. That's can, actually like total bullshit. Yeah. Um, you can say even anything your lawyer you would say Even your lawyer would say yeah. that. They'd be like, it doesn't ever protect you. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, you could show it in court, but it, you know, the only way to really protect yourself is to have liability insurance, to be aware of what you're building, and yeah. to uh, do engineering best practices. Yeah. But you know what the best advice is? Yeah. Always be good to your customers, be, and always be transparent, and always do the right thing. And tell the truth. And always, if you do the right thing, you actually have nothing to worry about. People only get hurt and things, bad things happen when someone has a problem with their product and you won't replace it. You won't even answer them. You won't go through a process. Or if someone has a, a question and there's no way that they can help. Or if they, there's no documentation. Or if it's just like a bag of glass, you know, like yeah. there's all sorts of things. Um, that's that's the best advice. Always, if you do the right thing. And in fact, a lawyer told uh, me before um, the best advice again is always do the right thing. You actually have nothing to worry about if you always do the right thing. But also engineer with best practice yeah, in mind. Of course. Okay. 
And uh, don't make medical equipment, because that you do need to have special That's licenses tough. for. Uh, next up, do you have any ba rechargeable battery recommendations charge a 3.5 TFT in Raspberry Pi? Mm, that's hard. Um, one of our USB rechargeable battery packs works pretty well. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, what are your basic rules to follow when designing PCBs in EagleCAD? That's a tough one for... Uh, follow the DRC. Yes. Any plans for the new low, uh, low power Bluetooth? Yes. Uh, yes. Coming soon, not out yet. It's not out yet. Yeah. We're still working on it. Um, Android just added support, so we're testing to make sure that it's supported yeah. with are the new Android. Are you expanding the RFID NFC sections? Yes, but not right now. Yeah, we actually have some more NFC stuff yeah. on the way. Everybody ETA for the tutorial of the VS1053 breakout. I think it's being worked on right now. Okay. That's right. I mean, not at this very moment because we're in front of a camera, but... Yeah. The tutorial writer is tutorializing. Yeah. It it's a hard one. It's, it's a very complicated board. That's why it it's is. taking a while. It is. Some tutorials are like, oh, it takes an hour or two. This one, I think, is like a 10-hour tutorial writing yeah. expedition. All right. What are your thoughts on the Spark, Spark Core... Uh, the Spark Core is not out, and it's not going to be shipping until probably next year. Spark Core does not exist, and it's not Arduino compatible. Okay. It's not. And, and so, this is, uh, mine's actually going to be an Arduino chip. Yeah. So we don't follow all the or different. Ki we don't follow the Kickstarters because they're a little bit of a distraction. But I know it's. I know it's a Cortex M3. It's not yeah. an actual AVR. Uh, we emailed with the folks. We think it's really cool. We want to work with their cloud service. And um, yeah, they said they want to make yeah. us compatible, but I I, it, just, cool. it just doesn't exist yet. I think it's super cool. Um, it's just not out yet. We and we have our hardware that's going to be shipping in like. Yeah, I can't wait for other days. people's Kickstarters. Next up, <laughs> how can I stream audio to an Arduino? Um, to an Arduino, like to play. I mean, if you want to play, we have a Wave Shield and our codec board. The VS ten fifty three codec board can both record audio and play audio. Um, so check that out. We have an example for recording AUG. It's actually hard to record because the analog digital converter is not that fast. It's hard to record. I mean, there's a tutorial for the wave shield and a microphone, but it's not as good as using the codec board to record audio because it, it'll um, encode it and, and compress it. So you'll get much higher quality because you're not waiting for the analog digital converter. So that's kind of the yeah. best way. Okay. Uh, when will we be um, carrying a bag of glass? Uh, yeah, I know. it's Next that. week. Yeah. <laughs> Four years of Glass Aspen Engineer soon. That's right. 209 weekly winners. Currently 173 watching. What can we win in trivia again? Um, yeah. Uh, One winner per lifetime. Yeah. One winner per lifetime. Per for lifetime. Now. Yeah. We have a lot of new people, and I want to make sure all the new people have a chance yeah. to win. Also, here's the cool thing. We're now on YouTube Live, and we're on Ustream. The problem with YouTube Live, though, is there's a delay because they do this DVR thing because they have all these other devices looking at yeah. it. So it is um, it is tough. Are you working on an LCD shield for the Raspberry Pi? Yes, yes I am. Yeah, if you could only see. If only you could see what's on my desk right yeah. now. It's very exciting. It's very covered with different LCDs, including capacitive touch displays. Ooh. Yeah. Did I just say capacitive touch displays? I did. Yeah, you did. I did. I did find a source for capacitive touch displays. Little teeny ones, so cute. Okay. All right, Light Ada, you know what time it is. It is time for cat. No, no, it's time no. for trivia question. Trivia question. What are the rules? Rules are only one winner per lifetime. I don't care <laughs> if there's been three thousand winners. <laughs> you can't yeah. win twice because everybody wants to win. So we want to give everybody a chance. And yeah. I was that kid who always like raised the hand and answered the questions in class, like math class, yeah. and uh, everyone hated my guts, and I got uh, beat up after class. So don't be that person. Give everyone a chance <laughs> to answer. You turned out okay. I turned All out right. okay. This is the prize. Jeremy Signed. Boyce. Yeah. Book. Exploring Arduino. It's an awesome book. There's yeah. even coupon codes for discounts. Check it out. All right, you ready for the trivia question? Yes. First person to type this up in the chat wins. Um, here it is. In 2011, Jeremy Blum was an R&D electrical engineer for what company? Oh, I didn't even know that. That's right. You need to go to his site. He's not the Olympic. There's like some famous skier. There, he's not the skier. And uh, skier? Yeah. So. Uh, then you'll have to click his LinkedIn profile, and then you'll have to scroll. Or if you are if you just know this stuff. Yeah, what company did he work at in 2011, New York City-based company, as an R&D electrical engineer? Which one is it? Whoops is not the answer. TI is not the answer. Kessler Fellowship is not the answer. 
Mad Magazine is not the answer. TI is not the answer. We visited Mad MakerBot, Magazine. Soccer is Designing electronics and sometimes software to enable these machines to make you anything. That's cool. I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know you worked at MakerBot. Yeah. I don't think it's public, but I, I know where he's going next, but I'm not going to say it. I don't think it's, it's not public. It's not his LinkedIn yet, so I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Well, he's at Element 14. Well, Doing yeah, but don't, but don't say anything more because I don't know if it's public where he's going to next. I don't know where he's going to next. Okay, you don't know at all. All right, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later after the microphones are off. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, check out this book, though. Yeah. It's a nice book. Okay. So, uh, it's 11 o'clock. It's time to end the show. Okay. Need, uh, uh, oh, Socket11, please email us, support at and we'll send you out this signed copy. The only one in existence that I know of, that I, can, that I know of. Yeah, this is cool. It's this book covers a lot. It's thorough. All right, a couple last things. Got to wrap up the show. Yeah. Here's a special treat. Here's a video of MOSFET yelling at a bird. Birds. Birds. I'll play it twice. Look at the bird. Yeah. So we have birds outside our window birds. where MOSFET lives now. And, you know, birds. he's just like. You can't freaking. stand it. Yeah, he's birds. like, what are these birds doing here? They're invading. Birds. So that is MOSFET. Yeah, that's his hobby because there's these yeah. two doves that sit outside our window. They're kind of like stanky. Doves are like yeah. brown doves. Don't forget the code is OSCON. Please help us pay the bills and keep this thing up. Pay right. for our expensive microphones. These are really right. pricey wireless microphones. Everybody said get better sound, get better sound. We finally like spent money. How much sound. are these things? These are like they're like six hundred bucks or something. Uh, they? they're like three hundred something each. Wow. It's worth it. You guys can hear us. Loud and clear, yeah, you know? but when we have guests, you have to have we have to have four because if you have guests, they also have to have these mic wireless mics. Yeah. And they chew through batteries too. They really they, they really do. eat batteries up. Okay, here is, we'll see everybody next week, by the way. And thank you once again, everyone, for the, from the open source community for nominating Our Lady Ada. Thank you. It's a big deal. Here I'm is honored. your moment of Zener. I couldn't have done it without forking the shoulders of giants. <laughs>